poverty is a choice if you are in christ now some people will abuse what i'm saying but i know what i'm saying the video we're about to watch and comment on today might trigger some viewers if you're easily offended it's advisable to discontinue watching now however if you're someone actively seeking scriptural truth across various aspects without sugarcoating or diluting the facts including in your financial matters, I extend an invitation to join us on this exploration of an impactful message from Prophet Lovey regarding wealth. Let's delve right in without any delay. Poverty is not only a choice, but it is somebody choosing to be in a curse, especially if you are in Christ Jesus. Listen to what the Bible is saying. It's saying, a good father leaves an inheritance for his children's children. But then he doesn't put a full stop. There is a continuation. He says, and, meaning it's part of it. And the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. So you cannot leave an inheritance for your children's children until you know how to take up what is laid up by the sinner. Numerous Christians express discomfort when a man of God broaches the subject of money and wealth creation. Often, they insist that such discussions constitute a prosperity gospel exploiting people, unless Jesus is the central focus. However, these matters are extensively addressed in Scripture because the Bible is more than a mere religious text. It serves as a guide on how to lead a prosperous life, encompassing both spiritual and material aspects. It underscores that you inhabit a physical body, not crafted by the devil, but by God himself, who is a spirit. This emphasizes that the physical and material realm is neither wicked nor irrelevant, contrary to the beliefs held by many within religious circles. You are good as far as God is concerned. If you can leave your children's children something, and the way to leave them something because remember, for you to leave something for your children's children is not riches. An inheritance should be wealth. Riches can be consumed by one generation. Wealth is from one generation to the next generation, to the next generation, to the next generation. God wants you to come out of a rich mentality into a wealthy. That is why the Bible says he has brought us to what? A wealthy place. Not a rich place a wealthy place now the issue is the believer does not know how to take the wealth that belongs to you will not come from heaven the challenge for many christians lies in the belief that salvation is the end awaiting jesus's return for passage to heaven yet this deviates from god's plan the issue of salvation was sorted long before man was even put on earth. Scripture says that the Lamb was slain before the foundations of the earth. Sin has already been dealt with, and your work is to exercise dominion on the earth, as God instructed Adam and Eve. In Genesis, God clearly instructs man to be fruitful, multiply, and have dominion. Failing to fulfill this God-given mandate isn't something God takes lightly. The trap Satan sets is a passive life, encouraging individuals to wait, hoping to escape the world's tumultuous events. This snare is insidious because the devil is actively working to ensure that those who have tapped into the anointing of wealth end up unwittingly serving his agenda. According to scripture, when the Antichrist emerges, many will be compelled to accept his mark, facing restrictions on buying or selling. This directly impacts the economy. For those who believe in a pre-tribulation rapture, the inclination might be to dismiss these concerns, assuming they won't be present during such events. However, the stage is already being set, and the spirit of the Antichrist is already present. Reflecting on the events of 2020 reveals certain restrictions placed on those who chose not to comply with certain directives, impacting even churches. This marks only the beginning, and the situation is poised to worsen, particularly for those lacking the economic power to resist or oppose such developments. The wealth that God has ordained for you is not coming from heaven. 
There is a sinner somewhere. There is a wicked person somewhere. There is a lost person somewhere. Yes. That is holding all your billions, your millions Come on. that you are supposed to use for the glory of. Come on. But if you don't understand the principle and the way to get what is yours, what you're going to do is this. You're going to find yourself continually demonizing people that hold your wealth to your next level. Understand this. The Bible says this, and it says it this way. Your gift will make room for you, and it will bring you before great people. It didn't say it will bring you before Christians. Contrary to the misconception that God is indifferent to the growth of wealth, the parable of the coins underscores the significance of multiplying the resources bestowed upon us by God. In this context, Jesus uses the example of coins to symbolize the value instilled in us by God. It goes beyond mere monetary wealth. Instead, it serves as an illustration of the broader value invested in us by the divine. Rejecting wealth, therefore, equates to rejecting this intrinsic value with money serving as a tangible representation of it. Jesus' lesson on taxes emphasizes the dual nature of money, as evidenced by the well-known statement, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is his. The coins bore Caesar's image, underlining the connection between currency and authority. Furthermore, Jesus extends the concept by urging people to give to God what rightfully belongs to him. This implies that the value of a currency is determined by the image it carries. Therefore, offering to God what is his involves fostering and enhancing the value within human beings. This is because God conducts transactions through people, given that they are created in his image and reflect his likeness. I'm trying to open your eyes so that you can realize that many of you wasted 2023 because you wanted to be religious and you missed the blessing of God. If you want to find a foolish Christian, find a religious Christian. Understand this by the Spirit of God. Please comprehend this by the Spirit of God. Religion has blinded you to miss God and to miss the hand of God. This is what religion has done to the church. This is what religion has destroyed in the church. That many of us as children of the Lord Jesus, we want the blessing of God to be connected to us by people who are like us. Yet the Bible is saying you are in the world, Come on. but you are not of it. Yeah. But you have been deceived to think this thing. This is the deception. If they see you with somebody that they deem to be of the world, you have mingled with the world. You have mixed with darkness. You have become equally yoked with darkness. But this is the farthest thing from the truth because that's not how you mix. That is not what being equally yoked look like. This is why so many of you are talented, you're gifted, you are, you are so brilliant, you're so intelligent, but the innovations God has given you, you cannot take it anywhere because you want to put your innovation in the church. Yet God wants you to take it to the world so that people can see there is a God in heaven yes. that can inspire you, yes. can give you strategies, can give you wisdom, can give you understanding mm. to be help to the world. You have to remember that only those who give solutions are wealthy, not people who can work. I have never seen somebody working a job and they became wealthy. By now, the prophet's assertion that poverty is a choice should be gaining clarity, especially for those in Jesus with the mind of Christ. Dismissing wealth due to a fear of corruption is a fallacy. Wealth serves as a magnifier of one's existing character. It does not instigate a change. The conversation between Jesus and the rich young ruler stands as evidence supporting the truth I am communicating. When Jesus directed him to sell all his possessions and give to the poor, it illuminated the greed that had been magnified by the man's material wealth. Importantly, the man did not become greedy because of his wealth. Rather, his greed was inherently present. These possessions had assumed a central role in his life, and Jesus effectively held up a mirror, 
exposing what money had already revealed within him. As a result, the rich man went away in sorrow, recognizing the inner reality laid bare by his wealth. As the prophet emphasized, God anticipates your prosperity. Otherwise, he wouldn't guide us by stating that the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the just. Nor would he instruct us to leave an inheritance for our grandchildren and future generations. Furthermore, he wouldn't encourage you to give to the poor if you were struggling to make ends meet yourself. The proclamation that the wealth of the wicked is reserved for the just is echoed in scripture on multiple occasions. During the Israelites' departure from Egypt, God directed them to take gold from the Egyptians. Despite being physically present in Egypt, they were not spiritually bound to it. Egypt symbolizes the world. It is possible to live and engage with a secular culture while still embodying the light, as we are the light of the world. This principle is exemplified by the Hebrew children who were taken captive in Babylon. Daniel, Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego thrived in a culture seemingly at odds with their God's principles. Yet, they did this by following the principles of their fathers. They didn't allow the world they were in to affect their consciousness. This requires a heightened consciousness. It also requires a heightened level of awareness of who you really are in God. Being a believer doesn't guarantee alignment with the great things God has in store if one embraces the devil's lie that wealth is inherently wicked. Satan understands that an economically empowered believer is less susceptible to manipulation. The story of Daniel and his friends in Babylon underscores this truth. We exist within the world, but are not defined by it. We carry the light of God, who is the father of lights. Contrary to common belief, it is scarcity, not wealth, that fosters more problems in society. To substantiate this, consider affluent neighborhoods and compare their crime rates with impoverished areas. The evidence is clear. When people lack, they often gravitate towards various forms of wrongdoing. Proverbs aptly notes, the rich and poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. However, the crucial understanding behind this statement is that God does not create individuals destined for poverty. The decision between wealth and poverty rests with each person. The consciousness of either poverty or wealth is an individual choice. And since you possess free will, God refrains from interfering with that choice. The Bible teaches that God desires prosperity. Poverty is a curse, and a benevolent God wouldn't want his children under a curse. However, obtaining wealth requires following principles. Prayers and fasting alone won't bring money. The mindset of just paying bills and having food is limiting. If anything, it's selfish, and it's centered on pride, since one is only thinking of oneself. And yet, God is a God of generations. Thriving requires a broader perspective of awareness and consciousness. Look forward to the next video delving deeper into this topic. Subscribe if you haven't and share with someone who needs to hear it. God bless until the next one.